the grammar of multiliteracies, the approach that uh, we're dealing with here, involves for us five questions. The first one is, what do the meanings refer to and describe in any text? Secondly, how do these meanings or dialogues connect the people in the action that's described in the text? Thirdly, how is the text structured so that the overall meaning hangs together? And fourthly, how do the meanings situate the activity and the people and how are they shaped by their context? And fifth, whose purpose and interests are the meanings of the te text designed or intended to serve? These five questions can be asked not only of alphabetical literacy, but equally they apply to other modes of meaning making, separately or in combination with writing. They are the ways in which we analyse the relationships between language choices, purposes and, of course, design. Now, I'm going to move on now to another grammar, uh, a grammar that we've been developing through our multiliteracies work. And the challenge we've been trying to address is how do we build a grammar which describes meaning making, including language, but also including other modes? In other words, what are the kinds of things we might be thinking about when we're dealing with multimodal texts, when we're dealing with image, when we're dealing with these, these other modes of meaning? And what we've done is we've developed what we call five questions about meaning. The first three are a little bit like the Halliday and Metafunctions, although slightly different as well. So um, our first three questions are, what do the meanings describe? We might be describing a mountain in words, or we might be showing a picture of a mountain. So we call this referring. This is the act of referring, right? All meanings refer to things, no matter what mode they're in. How do the meanings then connect the people in the action and the people who are interacting? So, for example, if I write something which doesn't say, and you, and I, doesn't use the first person, it speaks very objectively. Uh, if I show an image which is an oblique angle of some people interacting, as opposed to looking directly in their eyes and directly in their faces in the picture, right, we're positioning them interpersonally with each other and you as the viewer, reader, interpersonally with the text in different kinds of ways. So we can actually configure people around, um, uh, uh, around actions and um, the, so it's both within the text and to potential viewers, readers, whatever the mode might be. And we call this to dialogue. That's what our second, um, uh, question, uh, our second um, uh, area is. The third one is how does the overall meaning hold together? So when we do make a picture or uh, uh, write a text or speak about something, um, these texts always have structure. They're complicated structures too, to be quite frank. So they always have organisation and structure. And one of the things, um, as I began these videos about writing, one of the things I said was uh, that, um, that in fact the, the way in which we structure speech is very different from the way in which we structure writing. But two things now, the fourth and the fifth question about meaning, which are often neglected in grammars, linguists, accounts of language, is that the meanings actually are not just in the text, they're actually in the context. So when I say the word he or she, uh, you know might know who I'm referring to because they're in the next room or they're across here or, or you just know who it is because we're in the same uh, contextual universe. So that's a, a narrow version of uh, the meaning not being in the text. But also what we do with meanings is we, 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 we frame things up. We say things which are like certain things. So when we do, when we speak in a certain genre or write in a certain genre, it's because this text is like another text. This text only makes sense because there's another similar text like it and you recognize the genre. So in other words, the text doesn't just have the meaning in it. It has the meaning from a universe of contexts. And the fifth thing, uh, and by the way, this is in the Hallidayan system around the notion of purpose. We're always doing things for a purpose. And our intent, what we intend, um, is also what situates a text. And when I read a text, when I'm listening to a person, or when I'm reading a piece of a work, or I'm looking at an image, 
the inference or the interpretation of their intention is actually pretty important. And I'm all the time trying to figure that out. An intention is something which involves human beings with motivations and with desires and with purposes and with emotions. And that world it also surrounds the world of text. So what we've done with these five questions is we've built them as things which are always present in every meaning and five questions which can always be asked of every meaning, not just of language and of image, but also of multimodal text with language and image put together, for instance. So what we want to try and do with this grammar is build uh, uh, um, a set of, a, a set of tools of analysis, if you like, um, of the way in which meanings happen in the world of multimodality. Why is this important? Well, in the world of new media, the world of the internet, the world of today's television, the world that we live in, uh, almost all of our texts are multimodal and we need a grammar which is capable of operating beyond words and sentences a la traditional grammar or language only as in Chomsky uh, and the classical versions of Halliday.